everybody. This is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. And if you want to get your money's worth, you'll stay right here. WNS Podcast. <laughs> Everybody's got a price for the Million Dollar Man. You are listening to the official Wrestling News Source Podcast. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com or check us out on Facebook by searching WrestlingNewsSource.com or WNS Podcast. You can also find us on YouTube, Twitter, Stitcher, and iTunes by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast or WNS Podcast. Now being broadcast in over 45 different countries, here are your hosts, Daniel Heron, Tyler A. Bear, and Doug. That's right. What's up, everyone? I am Daniel Heron. I am Tyler A. Bear. My name is Rashid of the Turbulent Wind. Remember the name well. Remember. I don't know That's Doug, and we welcome you to episode 265 of the official podcast. For WrestlingNewsSource.com, for all of your information, back. go to WrestlingNewsSource.com. Check us out on Facebook, WrestlingNewsSource.com. You can find us on Facebook, WNS Podcast, on YouTube, WNS Video, and on iTunes, Wrestling News Source Podcast. Yep. That's true. Yeah. So how you doing? No, you got stuff to say. Oh, shit. Uh, you can find us on Stitcher, Beyond Pod, and Player.fm. Just search Wrestling News Source Podcast or whatever. You can find us. Uh, the podcast is on Twitter, at WNS Podcast. Daniel's at WNS underscore Daniel. See, if you don't show any interest in the product, why are the listeners going to be interested in the product? So they can listen to me. But if you're not be- no, sounding just to interesting. listen to my voice in general, not to, I don't know. Okay. So welcome to the show. We've got lots to talk about this week. It is an important week for me personally, but uh, we'll dive why? into that a little bit later on. Um, we've got some feedback. We're going to talk about Raw, a little bit of Lucha Underground, Hot Topics, and Q&A, and... We've got a big bit of feedback that we're going to push towards the Q&A, and that's from Micah. So, Micah, if you're listening, it will be aired on the show, but it's about a page and a half of uh, of comments. So, we'll save that for the end of the show. Um, so, welcome to the show. How you guys doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah? I think the real question uh, is how are you doing? What's your mindset right now? I'm ready to do this show. <laughs> Other than that, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, the time has come. The little little boy Daniel, all grown up, decided to get hitched. So it's gonna be this Saturday. It should be a lot of fun. And then uh, Saturday is the wedding. Sunday we hop on a ship and go to the Caribbean's. Um. Oh, so no show next week. Yeah, correct. There will not be a show is next it two week. weeks or just, next just one week. Um. I will be. It'll be a seven day cruise. So leave on a Saturday, come back on. Or will, no, I'm sorry. Leave on a Sunday, come back on a Sunday. I'm going to ask you this question when you get back, but the, the question will be: Did I catch Zika? No. I, I hopefully the answer will be no. That no, that wasn't the question at all. Oh. But um, I know. Is that, that how t- you pronounce it? I thought or it was Zika? Like, I think it's Zika. Whatever it is. Sounds like a drink. That's Zima. I told you it sounds like a drink. <laughs> put, a do- put a Jolly Rancher in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll taste delicious. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get you Zimas at the reception, and we're gonna see how. <laughs> I don't think they'll have delicious. Zimas there. <laughs> I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna I'm bring them into. We'll be doing the work do all night long. Uh, bring, all right. Can you even Zimas. get Zimas anymore? He, I had no. no. He doesn't like Zimas. <laughs> and they don't make them anymore. I don't think they do. Uh, I know I you, they I, discontinued them like tasted, years ago. I've tasted Zimas jo- before. I know you wouldn't like it. With a Jolly Rancher in it. I've never had it with a Jolly Rancher because let's be honest, you look like a dumbass if you put a Jolly Rancher in it. <laughs> but it, I don't care if it looks stupid. It, it tastes better. Uh, that day of my wedding, uh, went by fast mm-hmm. and I'm going to ask you how you felt, you know, did it go yeah. fast for you and stuff? Because I'm sure it will. And you know, it hasn't really hit me yet. The, the, the feelings and all that, like I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready for it. But another part of me is like, I have done nothing to help get this wedding underway. Same with me. And so in a sense, it feels like, Oh, I mean, it's a bit, it's, I I feel like I'm supposed to feel bigger about the event, you know. Well, I don't know. There was I would, I did the same thing you did. Ask if there's anything. They're like, no, mm-hmm. no, I'll get it. And then later on, they'll be like, well, I got all this stuff. I got all this stuff to do. And the, like, mm-hmm. you know, they're all stressed out. I'm like, I offered to help. You yeah. want me to help? <laughs> it's like I feel like I should be stressed out. You know? Oh my God, there's so much stuff I haven't left. Uh, I still have to do. Out. I'm gonna play video games. Pretty much. That's that's the general idea. I'm gonna play video games while everyone else stresses out. I'm going to do what everyone has said that I am going to do, which is just tell me when to show up. <laughs> See, I remember 
my wedding, I just uh, I went around and like shook people's hands. Like mm-hmm. after I was, if I was on the dance floor, Daryl pretty much stayed in the one spot. Yeah, so Every, well, everyone comes times, up to I'm her. Like, I'm like shaking people's hands. Yeah, or whatever. But uh, I'll probably do the same. I, I like don't... I want to walk around and thank everyone for you know taking time out of their day to spend it spend it with me and all that. But you know, or have people come up to me. I'm gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna stand over there. If you want pictures and autographs and all that, and come over and say hi. Oh, the choice is out of the drink. I think I'll take that cocktail. Yeah. Or whatever. I don't. I'm not a bigger fan. He wants or the cocktail. Say what I like. I like cock. Tail. Tail. You mean chicken? Tail. No, it's it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Reference. Mm-hmm. You don't remember that? Oh, I remember that okay. episode. I remember the episode you're referencing, dude. Okay. But. I mean, you just never corrected yourself, so I'm just, right? Does Daryl know? I like chicken. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. So, there's that. So, I'm getting married this Saturday, and you're talking about, <laughs> <laughs> talking about cock <laughs> and your love for it. <laughs> this is a wrestling podcast, sir. I don't know if you're aware of that. It we can do transition. It can transition like into something like uh, we started the show Joey off the rails. Ryan, the king of the dong style. There you go. Yeah, See? sponsored a- by you porn for all of your dong needs. Check Joey Ryan. So, dog, how are you? I'm good, man. Yeah, welcome back. We missed you. Hey, I'm back. Show's just not the same without you. Well, thank you. I, I feel like you know we have to have a, someone to bounce our opinions off of, and I like to hear your your take on things and. You know, it's just not the same. Yeah, it sucks, man. I wish I could. I got to carry this guy for, you know, hour, hour and a half. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wish I could be here every week. It just things are bad things right Things happen. Now. Yeah. Yep. Nothing so. you can do. Well, we're happy to have you back. Thank you for coming back. Appreciate Hopefully it. they can, you know, get some new people for uh, at your work. Yeah, mm-hmm. hopefully. So. We'll see. You ready for the wedding? Yeah, man. Be a I good mean, time. I don't. I just. I just gotta go to the party. I don't have any responsibility. Exactly. You so, get. You walk down an aisle. Me. You stand there, and then you get to party. It's a rough. T- it's a rough job. So I just gotta do. It. The only yep. thing I do is have, have a speech. You but stand, I'm gonna. I'm gonna eat some good food. I'm curious as to how you're gonna do for your speech. Yeah, me too. Because I know that. <laughs> you know, you might be. Do you want me to stand with you? That might help. Uh, I mean, I'm good too. I'm gonna be nervous. I don't want to embarrass. I mean, I'm not gonna embarrass you. We're gonna you. put you like up on stage. You have a spotlight. Spotlight on, me? on you. Lights faded. Hey, is it hot in here? Uh, don't do that. No, <laughs> nah, I got it. It's all good. Okay, you seem pretty nervous right now, just thinking about it. Drinking my water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got to make sure the vocal cords are ready to go at, an, at a moment's notice. I'm gonna do some vocal warm ups before I get up there. Now. Are you going to read, or are you going to just deliver a speech? Um, I'm trying to remember it, you know, but mm-hmm. I've, I'll have the, the speech with me. Are so they gonna I, be like, I'll take it out. Is it going to be one piece of paper or, like, note cards? Because um, sometimes those can get shuffled up. And, I'm actually you can drop uh, going to – I have it – it's written out, but I'm going to read – like, type it up so it's on one sheet. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, are you going to shave, or should I shave? What's the, what's the deal? Uh, I'm gonna trim all of this up, and I'm gonna go get a haircut um, Thursday. His head. No, I'm not gonna shave my head, but it will be rather short. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna at least. I'm not gonna be full You're on gonna be clean, like clean cut. Shave. Okay, no, so we're good. Then. I mean, if you want to come in with with your five o'clock shadow and your scruff, that's you know, that's totally fine. Cool. You, you come just, in how you want. I'm gonna keep this one. Yeah, that's fine. Just trim it up, and you know, make it look presentable. And then after that, I don't care what y'all do. So you need to keep your facial hair. Uh once the wedding is over, I will begin to regrow it. Yeah, but it'll take all that work to do that. Yeah, all I have to do is not shave. You need to like put like a streak of color in it. In I already it. have a streak of do color. You have, do you have oil that you use for it? Like no. Beard oil? Although every once in a while, I do get some some of Kelsey's uh, conditioner, and I'll put it in there, and it makes it really soft. I'm. I'm curious about beard oil. <laughs> I've never used that before. Neither have I. And I've got this magnificent. Yeah, it's it's gonna be thing. a fun time, man. And I can't wait for the food too. <laughs> I love food. Yeah, I 
I really think people are going to be talking about the food because it is pretty outstanding. Really? Because I Googled both of them. I was like, which of these do I think I'm going to eat? Because you know how you send us those things and it said to make a choice or whatever? Mm-hmm. So I was like, one of them had coconut in it. I was like, I definitely don't like coconut. So yeah. like, I looked at the other one. I was like, ah. I guess that one looks fine. I don't know. It's how do you like your steak? Uh, medium, well, medium. Medium, okay. Then you're gonna love it. Okay, it's gonna be awesome. Do you? How do you like your steak? Um, I I always do like well and stuff, but I'm going back. Like I'm doing like medium, medium. Now. Okay, then y'all should be y'all should be good. Um, because I tried it and nice. Oh, so it's just like a fucking chunk of beef or whatever. Yeah. Okay. It's like a giant. See, it's a giant slab of meat. Nice. That's what it. You're you're lucky because we picked on the thing on the list of what we wanted, but mm-hmm. we didn't get to like taste anything before. Yeah. You well, went, we went and tasted it, and we were expecting like, okay, here's a plate, a little bit of you know finger foods of everything you're gonna try. No, we sat down. It was full blown meal. Like they they laid it out, you know, like. 10 pieces of the chicken, a whole slab of the meat, and, like, a whole tray of mashed potatoes, whole tray of mango rice, a whole tray of salad. Like, we were sitting there, like... That's interesting. Mango we're, rice. Yeah, we were sitting there, like... We are like, mm. eight people, and y'all expect us to eat all of this? Like, that, we it's insane. It no, we couldn't. That's oh. the thing. And we are like, well, what do y'all do with it? They are like, we throw it away. I mean, you throwing that away? That's wasteful. Yeah. So, um, but the food is outstanding, um, and I hope y'all really dig it. Can't wait for that and sugars. Sugars, yeah, that's gonna be really good too. So, you are in for a nice treat. Dinner on us. All that. right. So you don't have to pay. Y'all just show up. Okay. That's all you have to do. I'm you fine with that. Show up to the the rehearsal and show up to the wedding, and you get free food. Sounds Sound good. Deal. Good deal. All right. Well, with that being said, like we did mention, uh, there will not be a show next week. So, uh, because I will be out of the country. Because the show's over. No. It's over. No, no. It's been a good run. <laughs> yeah. No, the show is not over. The show will continue because we did guarantee uh, Doug, what was it, like a year and a half ago that we'd give you two years? So We guaranteed five, to, remember? When we come back when I come back from the honeymoon, we're gonna have to go through we're gonna have to begin contract negotiations on how long we're gonna extend the show. My my asking price is up. Uh, my appearance <laughs> fee is like more now. What, to like a penny per episode or now you expect you actually expect to get paid this time? That's right. Or? My appearance fee is who uh hundred percent more. Hundred percent more than zero? So it's still zero. So I think we can work out that deal. That's not how math works. Pretty sure it does. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm not a math doctor or anything. <laughs> That's probably for the best. So let's dive into the show. Uh, we have some feedback. It's coming from Brian saying, I wanted to give you all some feedback. You all weren't wrong last week. Well, that's always good news. Um I listened. You guys were wrong. Were we? I, I don't know. I don't even, um, I don't even know what he's going to say. I'm just saying, saying, agreed with everything that was said about Reigns. And uh, trying to jam three world titles, uh, three world title reigns into him already. Uh, Move some folks around towards the front of the line. He lost that title fair and square more than once. They are a company trying to make a trying to make a profit, and it isn't always important what the fans want, especially if it isn't in their blueprint. We get a lot of great matches and moments sometimes so it's not all sour grapes with everything that's happened so far in 2016 and with the folks coming in hopefully we'll be given a reason to look past reigns and enjoy a poop filled year of wrestling keep it up guys thanks poop i did not write that no you did not okay <laughs> you looked real worried like he's like i'm he's... like uh oh you missed i don't know if you listened to the show i listened we had Quite the discussion about Mr. A <laughs> Bear tampering with the show, uh, sabotaging uh, you know, what's being said. They keep you on your toes. Yeah, I don't know, Doug. You said you listened to last. Did you listen to last week's show? I think so. I'm pretty sure. Was I in the wrong with my thoughts on the Wyatts and all that? And oh, I mean, I remember you talking about it, but I don't remember your points exactly now. Okay, I'll have to go back to remember what it was. I'll. Kind of in a haze from that. But, um, yeah. But thanks for the feedback. We always do appreciate it. And like I said, there is feedback that 
also pertains into a question later on in the show, so stick around for that. Well, let's dive on into Raw um, as we get closer to WrestleMania. 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 Or we're getting closer to that, uh, what was it was that road? Uh, roadblock. Roadblock. Yeah. Roadhouse. Street Corner. I get it. They were making play off the road to WrestleMania. It's a roadblock. Mm. Anyway. It's a lot. Um, we kick things off with Hunter coming out, talking to all kinds of jazz. Dean Ambrose interrupts him saying, hey, you know, I got the crap beat out of me and I wanted to fight Brock Lesnar, but I want to fight you instead. Give me that title shot. And Hunter was like, no, but I'll think about it. Any thoughts on the opening segment? I mean, I think in the larger sense, it was a positive direction for Dean Ambrose. Mm-hmm. Um, there is still some things that he makes as character choices that sort of rub me the wrong way. Like he's a, sometimes, even when he's being serious, he's like a little too wacky for me. Like um, wacky and crazy. I mean, he's not. I mean, it's not the same thing. I don't want people to think I'm putting the types of things he did in this segment in the same category as the types of things he was doing whenever he was like shooting people with like mustard and ketchup <laughs> and shit. I don't mean that, Yeah. but there's just like a little, like there's a little bit of something about the way he presents himself that I struggle not to roll my eyes at. And, um, and I like the guy, so that's probably not the best of things. So mm-hmm. I can imagine people who don't like him, which I'm probably in the minority of people who like have a problem with the way he presents himself. I still like him overall. I don't get yeah. me wrong. But and he uh, seems to be like the biggest baby face they have right now. Well, I think they're finally pushing him as the 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 like one A baby face that they mm-hmm. have right now. So I mean, I think that's positive movement in general. Mm-hmm. There's still just some little things that he does that rub me wrong, the wrong way about his character. But I don't know. Like the and also sometimes he does like. Um, exaggerated selling that I really dislike like previous weeks raw where he came back from the ambulance uh, that like when he was like crawling to the ring to uh, to like have mm. a face off with uh, Lesnar it was like yeah. his, his his selling was a little bit exaggerated like too exaggerated for me for driving my- the the ambulance then falling out and crawling yeah I mean I think there's a fine line between like selling and like overselling and i think he he falls in the line of overselling too often for me he does that like comical like he teeters Sean, that line a little too often he does the sean michaels like overselling like, mm-hmm. like too big like bringing it in a little bit um because i think the things that last week's segment and this week's segment could have done one and i like him already but it could have done wonders for me as a fan of him if he would like no winter rain in spots uh, that he, I don't know. I mean, I'm probably the minority. I'm sure most people love everything that he does, but there's just some shit that he does that rubs me off. Yeah, well, it's one of those things, you know, if you look at it a certain way, maybe you'll see things a little different. And I'm talking to the fans who are just diehard fans, and that's with any wrestler. Sure. You know, if you if you look at it from an outside perspective or at a different angle, you might see things, and yeah, I can I can see that. That might need he might need to work on that a little bit. I don't like how he talks certain times. Like whenever mm-hmm. he was talking to Triple H, and he was like, "Oh, no, there's a lot going on." He ran through what happened on Raw, mm-hmm. and then he'll say, "He's like, hey, you don't like shame at me? Why? Why is it because of that?" And then they kind of like you know just like off a little mm-hmm. little topics and stuff. And he's just like, like a, get to the point, you know. He's just like a roller coaster ride with me because I'm like he like he has me, then he loses me, then he has me, then he loses me. I'm like, if he could just like rein in certain spots, he could keep me. Yeah, but uh. I don't know. I'm sure, me again, tight. I'm sure I'm in the minority here. He's certainly not the worst, at least. So. No, for sure not. I mean, he <laughs> he is... The one thing that you can say for him is he's he's connecting with the crowd in a way that a lot of the other people uh, that they would like to be uh, top-tier baby faces aren't. And so that's definitely a huge positive for him. Mm-hmm. So really good stuff. Um, and that's not something you can fake. So Yeah. But like we said... Uh, Hunter did say, "Oh, I'll consider it, and I'll let you know by the end of uh, by the end of Raw." Um, but after that, we got to see a number one contenders match between Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks to determine who was going to face Charlotte 
uh, at WrestleMania, and this match actually ends in a draw. Um, any thoughts on the uh, on the matchup, the double pin? I thought the match was really, really good. I think it was honestly the best thing on the show altogether. Yeah. And uh, I don't have a problem with the finish because I think we're obviously going to get to a triple threat. I mean, I know they have like another mm, yeah. one on SmackDown or something, yeah. but I still my think guess that, is that ends on a count out. Yeah, I'm sure the end goal is still triple threat, so I don't have a problem with the uh, finish in that sense. And uh, yeah, I thought that was the best match on Raw. Mm-hmm. And it, it's one of the few. Um, storylines that's actually having some focus and having some direction as far as where they're going. Like for the U.S. title, no idea where they're going. Intercontinental, no idea where they're going. Tag title, eh, maybe we have some sort of an idea, but that's possibly going to change. And then, you know, the World Heavyweight Championship is already set in stone. So um, Yeah, even like a, a lot of the early match uh, storytelling that they did with... Um the, the, a lot of the mat work and the chain wrestling where Sasha was fighting for the bank statement repeatedly. Mm-hmm. And the, even Byron Saxton um, did a pretty good job on commentary as far as getting the storyline of the story of the match up, uh, across that these people know each other so well that they know what each other's going for. They know how to get out of it. And it mm-hmm. was, uh, I just think it was a really well worked match. And, uh, you know, Byron Saxton is not the best commentator in the world, but I think he did a good job of pointing out the story of the match. There. Yeah. Actually providing some of the story without the fans having to figure it out. So, uh, like I said, the match ends in a draw, and uh, it's it's looking the way the booking's going. Like we're we're probably going to see that triple threat at WrestleMania, which more power to it. Uh, after that, we got to see a very fast match between Dolph Ziggler and The Miz, with The Miz getting the victory via roll up. I I don't have a problem with them deciding to flip The Miz switch on again. In the sense that they're going to give him something to do, even though I'm not sure what there is actually for him to do. I mean, but mm-hmm. I guess that remains to be seen. What I do have a huge fucking problem with is that Owens should have lost those fucking matches to Ziggler for him to turn around and lose to a, a complete non-starter in the Miz who has not done anything of relevance or anything of substance in many a months. Mm-hmm. I think that's bad booking. I don't think... I think you could... They, they make up bogus bullshit all the time to get people in matches and they they find bogus ways to not beat people that all the time like they could have done that for owens because he's one of the more well he's not they don't do a great job of protecting anybody as we all know but he is one of the guys who they've done a better job of protecting Mm -hmm. and it's complete bullshit for him to lose those matches to ziggler for ziggler to turn around and lose to someone like the miz it's yeah bullshit yeah definitely you know, and especially the, since the match lasted, you know, a minute to a minute and a half, it's just. I mean, I don't even care that it was a fluke roll up. I mean, right. it's just the point that it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe it's saying, you know, like you said, they are turning the switch on for Miz because he he kind of stepped his game up over the last few weeks with the Jericho and AJ uh, stuff that he involved himself with. Also, they need some people. <laughs> yeah, they need some stars. Maybe he'll team up with uh, Stardust to go up against uh, Arrow and they'll bring in Hugh Jackman or something. I don't know. Wolverine. That'd be weird. Anyways, um, after that, we got the uh, the top of the hour, another promo. Uh, this one done by Stephanie McMahon, who you know took out her aggressions on, on her brother Shane, saying, you've ruined all this, and uh, if you think it, you know, you're going to take control of raw you're you're dead wrong and they're, all kinds of uh, other stuff hyping the heck out of shane mcmahon yeah they're on really book they've posted many clips of him fighting different people in the past and mm-hmm. they also have him working out you know and they're hoping to sell that's what that's what it is they're hoping for buys and ticket sells and uh people are gonna be excited about this match but honestly and Doug, I know you weren't here last week, but what are your thoughts on this whole Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker Hell in a Cell? I think it reeks, absolutely reeks, of them being completely like. I just think it reeks of desperation. I think they had, they probably thought Cena was going to be back, and that was the rumored match. Cena doesn't look like he's going to be back, so they brought in Shane. I mean. I want to know how many people they called that said no before they got <laughs> Shane. Obviously, they called Austin. Obviously, they called HBK. 
Obviously, they called the Rock. Who the fuck else did they call before they before they got Shane in? And I guess he meets all the requirements of a pushed main eventer in the WWE because he's a star from the Attitude Area. He's over forty, so <laughs> they my, couldn't get Batista. My, my, yeah, I'm sure they called Big Dave as well. I think I want to know who and how many they called before they brought in Shane. <laughs> Because, yes, he got the nostalgia pop, and that's fine. I'm sure people are happy to see him. It was a, I'm not saying it wasn't a nice change of pace to see him, but if you're someone who is bored to tears and is really complaining about the 15-minute uh, opening segments with McMahons, do you think this is going to be any different? <laughs> Once like the new polish rubs off Shane, it's going to be a different McMahon. Mm-hmm. So, and if you're someone who is um, really, like, against like part-timers coming in like old people old star this is another <laughs> them not making new stars this is another them calling and he's not even an actual wrestler yes he's mm-hmm. wrestled some matches but he's an old part-timer who doesn't even wrestle he's a say i mean i'm sure a lot of people who would say that type of shit about other people aren't saying that about shane but it's the same fucking thing yeah and i know that it's been like longer since shane's been back so the shine is on shane a little more and i'm not even sh- i'm not talking bad about shane i'm just telling you like what it actually is it's mm. happening it is how how like bottom of the barrel are we going to scrape before we just say mania is just not going to be a bunch of fucking this is a rebuilding year we're just yeah. going to have to rebuild this year we need how many fucking times are you going to scrape for like 40 year old stars from the attitude era before you say, this year we're just going to try to make some new fucking stars. Yeah, which is what they should have been doing when I, once everyone started going out with injury. I believe with all the stuff going on, they're still going to be hard-headed. And they're like, nope, we're going to still try to bring stars back. Oh, absolutely. They're still going to be They're like, you know what will bring back ratings? People who brought in the ratings. Did we call Goldberg? I mean, look, this is not me hating on Shane because I'm sure Shane is going to go out there and perform to the best of his abilities. He's going to take some big, stupid bumps, and I'm going to be like, thank you for, I appreciate your effort mm-hmm. taking these big, stupid bumps. I, Especially I, at 46 years old. Sure. I Look, I, this is not a personal thing about Shane. This is an indictment of the WWE as a company and where they have failed to realize their situation and do something about it. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, Shane's going to win. He's, they're going to bring back <laughs> the Mean Street Posse. He's got this. I mean, yes, there's this rumor of the, like, the brand sp- split coming back, but... I mean, you already have a brand split. It's called NXT, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. That's your brand, mm-hmm. your brand split. You don't need another one. Do you Three think? Brands. Do you think one of the reasons? And I know we're getting off topic about it a little bit, but do you think one of the reasons why they haven't really brought in new stars from NXT is because they're trying to build NXT as its own entity? I mean, like they they toss a couple got new guys up there up to the main roster every once in a while. You got your Ascension, your Tyler Breeze, and and stuff like that. I think it's just, I just think it's Triple H's vanity project. I think, I think that this is how Triple H is endearing himself to the fandom to Mm -hmm. supersede Vince. This is him saying, this is his little project where he says, hey, you know all those guys you fucking like? I signed them, not Vince. Mm -hmm. It was Triple H. So when it's time for Vince to go and Triple H has to step up and take over the whole fucking boat, everyone's like, oh, we love this guy. He's, he gave us NXT. He signed AJ. He's the reason they signed AJ. He's mm-hmm. the reason they signed Kenta. He's the reason they signed all these. Like it's, I think it's spin for Triple H. So whenever he supersedes Vince, he unites all the fandoms on his side and he's looked at favorably. Yeah. I think... Like, if you notice, like, he wasn't even involved in all that Shane shit. Like, on, uh, mm-hmm. he was like, I, he's a, a far away from that. And also, he's your, he's your fucking, he's like beating the shit out of like Roman, like, it ain't no fucking thing. For him. <laughs> and then again, Ambrose, mm-hmm. like, he is just working like the beat all end all. He's pleasing, he's pleasing the casuals out of one side of his mouth and he's, he's, he's pleasing the internet out of the other side of his mouth. And it's like, because, I mean, if you look at the the fans aren't universally behind Roman. Well, he's going out there and whooping Roman's ass. And on the other, out of the other side of his mouth, he's like, "Hey, you know that guy you like? Fucking signed him." <laughs> like he's like, he's, "Yeah, we got Shinsuke. I beat up your boy and I signed new talent. Yeah, I think I think it's like love me. I think it's Triple H being a super politician. Yeah, like that's 
Will it always a, be its own it's a game thing? Game of chess. He's got his pieces. Will it always be his own thing? I don't. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? But <laughs> is yeah. it? I mean, is it, is it, are they going to move these guys up? I'm sure some of these guys have got to move up. Yeah. But largely, is that going to be? I don't know. But mm-hmm. I think it's a lot more to do with Triple H than. I mean, look, you see the way the guy fucking acts. He goes out there at the start of these shows every time there's a special, and he's like. Here is what I give to you, you yeah. fucking internet marks. This is my shit. <laughs> I mean, I mean, am I wrong? Is that no, how you're does? absolutely <laughs> correct. Standing in the ring and delivering his, his uh, you know, You know, and... the night after he got his ass handed, he's supposed to be selling a beating for oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, but I couldn't miss this <laughs> yeah. for all my little babies for you. Come my on. balls are huge. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's a little weird, right? <laughs> I think it's just, uh, I think it's fucking politics, man. Hey, Absolutely. I know you like, we got Shinsuke. You like Shinsuke? Yeah. We brought him in. You like those New Japan guys? I fucking signed them. <laughs> We're working. Vince didn't sign those fuckers. I signed them. Who brought in Austin Aries? That's right, I did. Who brought in AJ Styles? That's I'm right, I'm working to try to get the Bullet Club. Fucking too sweetened on Instagram with all your fucking local indie darlings. Come on, <laughs> man. That's politics. Come on. He's, he's waiting to bring up, I don't know, I, I'm kind of looking forward to the night after Mania because I have a feeling that some, there's going to be like more than one person come up from NXT that night. Like I feel, you know, we, obviously it's still way too soon for us to give our predictions for WrestleMania, but I feel like New Day might retain the championships, Enzo and Cass debut that night, and then, uh, you know, say Bailey debuts as well. Those are those are the big ones that I feel are going to be happening for uh, the night Joe? after after all. Uh, maybe Joe, but I I can see them holding that off for a little bit longer. I think if you give them, you know, end zone cast and Bailey, that's a that's a big um, give right there. I'm you know we're all you know Mania's not going to be that great this year, and I'm looking forward to the NXT show. More you did than- it again, you son of a bitch! What? What happened? Don't lie. I don't know what you're talking about. The week man. of my wedding, and you're going to sit there and lie? I would never lie to you. Seamus teams up with Poop Rusev. <laughs> See, I don't know. What does that mean? I got to take a piss. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do this again? Who's Poop Rusev? Why are you doing this? I don't know. What do you am have I issues? Doing? What am I doing? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking you about. You didn't want us talking to Doug, didn't you? No, I did it when you are in the bathroom. <laughs> so you did it. You admit it. There it is, <laughs> folks. Honest A Bear, fucking liar. <laughs> There's still time to make you not my best man. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. What? Don't do that. Hey. I don't know if I can have a best man who lies no, no, no. to my face. Okay, whoever's the week the next, of my wedding. Whoever's the next best man, I'll give him my speech and he can just read that. That would be Doug. Okay. Okay. Next in line. You go to the back of the line. Damn it. I'll move Ryan up. You be the usher. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Can I sing some usher songs? No. Damn it. You don't get this thing. You don't even get a microphone. What? That's right. I'll bring my own mic. Nope. I'll connect to the system. We're not going to do that. Yep. Yep. No, sir. So what happened about poop and Rusev? What? Nothing. What? There is no poop. I don't know. It has there been, is no poop? It has been stricken it's been from flushed. the record. It's been flushed. Yeah. Why do you do that? I, why, do you, why do you make me want to hurt you? <laughs> do you really want to hurt me? Do you really want to hurt me? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, all right. Well, let's dive back into Raw. Okay. Let's dive back. Um, so Sheamus teams up with Rusev to go up against the Lucha Dragons. Poop Rusev. Not Poop Rusev. <laughs> that has like a nice ring to it, though. No, it does not. Poop Rusev does not ring. <laughs> so, I don't know. What do you think about this matchup? Um, I was going in and out of that match. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Don't didn't, didn't hold your attention? Uh, it did not. How about you, Doug? That was fine. Yeah. Well, Sheamus and Rusev, not Poop Rusev, there you go. ended up getting the victory over the Lucha Dragons, and uh, Del Rio got in on the action attacking. So, that's nice. Um, after that, we got to see uh, an evil Ryback, a mean evil so, Ryback. We don't know if he's a heel. He's just being a little tough because he wants to split. He's and, heel. He's okay. just, you know. That's quick, right? Heel, face heel. That's, that was a quick turn. Not right? as quick as Big Show, but no, pretty quick. Sure. Um, I really don't care what happens with Ryback. Yeah, don't have an interest in him. No. Uh, supposedly, uh, they're trying to build him up to feud with Roman Reigns after Mania. So they're gonna have him be the next like monster heel. 
Well, he wants the spotlight. Spotlight's got to be on the big guy. <laughs> Cracker Barrel. Yeah, I don't know. What were y'all thoughts? What were your thoughts on uh, on um, the Ryback? For a guy, he likes to work pretty snug with everyone that he works with. He threw his fucking hands up quick to not take any glancing blows from like little old Adam Rose. <laughs> Did y'all see that? He was working pretty ag- work like pretty aggressive and reckless with Adam Rose, mm-hmm. and then the the. The second that Adam Rose started throwing some like forearms to the face, he threw his fucking yeah, hands up like don't. Yeah. <laughs> and it and it was it didn't like to me it was not like it was a protect myself like not a like this is don't hurt me. Yeah, it was like I don't want to hit take any shots to the I face. I can hit you, but you can't hit me. Uh, to me, it was uh, I don't mind stiffing motherfuckers, but don't accidentally hit me in the face. <laughs> yeah. Like, what did crack me up is that Ryback was in the ring. And he was like, hit me! And then Ry- uh, Adam Rose went to throw, and he, like, blocks it. It's like, no, you want him to hit you, so you don't, let don't him hit you. Don't say that shit when you're in a block. Yeah. Hit me! Block. Hit me! Block. I thought you were supposed to hit me. Block. So Ryback ends up getting the victory, being very vicious and hungry for more, I guess. He didn't even Crack say he didn't, he didn't even say it was feeding time. I'm so fucking hungry that y'all start talking about food, and I'm like, crack a barrel. Yeah. If you go in my office underneath my desk, there's some crackers. I thought I said there's some fries. If you want, uh, I've got some peanut butter crackers. I've got some cheese crackers, and I might take some. Yeah, crackers. go get take some. The edge off. Yeah, there you go. Take the edge off. With grab grab two crackers. if you want. Um, or four. After that, we got to see Chris Jericho teaming up with uh, AJ Styles. AJ, that's stupid. Yeah, to go up against the New Day, and uh, this is one of the one of the rare misses for the New Day. I didn't find their their promo to be that that funny, that entertaining. Uh, not really. I guess it didn't have enough but gyrations. You're, you're, you're that times, you know, not like enough like gyrations for me. Yeah. <laughs> but um. Yeah, you get that from time to time, and uh, and that's what makes the uh, the funny moments. The more only thing special. I, it was kind of funny to me is like during the match where they like have cards. Like, Here's your card, and they picked it. Oh, I got his number. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like what? <laughs> um, what yeah. if it was an ace? They probably took the aces out, probably. And the or kings king. and the queens. They yeah. probably took that out. The face cards. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, Jericho teaming up with Styles. I have uh, no interest in them as a tag team. Me, I don't know. Neither why. do I. Is it like? Because they're going to have a match. Was it next Raw or is it a SmackDown? They're having a, the match. Next week on Raw, it's going to be a title So is match. it going to be like, is it, you think they're going to keep on going, like they're going to lose and they're going to have something at Mania or uh, Jericho's going to turn on AJ? I mean, my guess was that they were going to wrestle New Day at WrestleMania, um, which I have like no interest in. And that doesn't have anything to do with New Day. I just, I have no interest in AJ as a tag team partner for Chris Jericho. I don't know why you can't find something more high profile for him to do. He's just fucking coming in. You just made a huge deal about him. Why can you already not fucking find something for him to do? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just, just like WWE's track record. Why Why can't... With people. And this whole like Kevin Owens Big Show shit, why can't you just do Owens and AJ? Like why, yeah. why don't you... Yeah. That's a mania match right there. <laughs> just give the people what they're asking for. I mean... Do something that's going to make a new guy or further a guy or make a new guy... And mm-hmm. given so, like give a hot act like more momentum by having a high profile mania match. Don't yep. fucking I don't have any interest in Kevin Owens big show either. Like I don't know what the fucking why can't why this is so difficult. I don't know. Well, I think what is gonna happen and obviously the uh, the tag team title match is gonna be happening next place next week on Raw. Uh but what I think is gonna happen is uh something's gonna cause them to uh them being AJ and uh and uh, Jericho. Why two AJ? I think they're going to lose the match. Jericho's going to get upset and turn on AJ. And so that's going to set up a feud between Jericho and AJ. They already did three fucking matches yep. for free on TV. That's stupid. What if it's like a retirement match? Hey, if I lo- if I can't beat you at WrestleMania, I'm, I'm done. I'm in. Then I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Or maybe it'll be something to set up for Roadblock. You know, oh, you know, he turned on me, so I want to fight you one more time. And then they fight at Roadblock. AJ gets the win. He moves on to potentially go up against Kevin Owens. Uh, Maybe. I feel like this Roadblock thing could be a chance for them to, you know, right some wrongs before Mania gets here. Because they're like, oh, God, you know. I don't see that happening. We've got to scramble. We've got to end some feuds to, to pick up the momentum for others and... 
So when is when's the date for Mania? Is what April third? April third, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. So they'll have roughly two weeks after Roadblock <laughs> to uh, to get all of their <laughs> matches lined up. I mean, if this was just for a Roadblock, fine, whatever. Mm-hmm. But you can't find something smarter to do for Mania than that. I have a problem with that. Yeah. I mean, the way it's looking, I'm kind of glad that I'm not going to be going to Mania this year. Like, I didn't spend money, and no offense to those who are going to WrestleMania this year, but... Ryan and Penn. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm the way that they have built it so far, it's not piquing my interest. You know? Like, when they finally... Decided, okay, yeah, we're going to go the way with the fans. We're going to give Daniel Bryan his chance. I was like, all right, we get to see that. And sure enough, you know, we got to see Daniel Bryan go on to win and, you know, sent the crowd home happy. I'm still bummed I'm not going. Like, um, yeah. I like the, I just like the atmosphere of being there. But when I say that I'm not, when I'm saying that, it, what, what I mean whenever I, uh, I say I'm, I'm fine with not going is it means, they haven't done anything that makes me feel like heartbroken for not. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, I will miss just being there because we've been to a couple now, and so I just like to go in general. But they haven't done anything that's just gonna like tear my heart out that I'm not there for. Other right. than probably the next two show, right? The NXT and the other independent shows, oh, and WrestleCon, and all those really cool things that are gonna be happening in the area. Oh, I still didn't get to check out that list. You said. Oh man, it's grown quite a bit. Way uh, more than people that we saw. Rey Mysterio is going to be there. Shawn Michaels. Um, you know, just tons and tons and tons of people. Um, so it's looking like a really good time. Like, part of me kind of wants to go up there just for Saturday, you know, and then come back and watch it at, watch WrestleMania at home. But, um, yeah, who knows? Um, but, yeah, Jericho and Styles end up getting the victory over New Day and then challenge them for the uh, tag team championships. And uh, after that, we kicked off hour number three with another McMahon cutting a promo. Vince McMahon coming down and uh, saying, here's the man. He's going to do all the dirty work for me. It's The Undertaker. Three-minute intro, 25 seconds on the mic, and Undertaker's done. Basically saying, uh, hey, you know what's going to happen whenever I close these doors, and it's not going to be blood on my hands. It's going to be blood on yours. Is, um... I beat the fuck out of your son. <laughs> do you Pretty think? Much. Do you think that Roman and Triple H is main eventing, or do you think that yes. this is main eventing? I think the, the Triple H versus Roman Reigns will be the main event, and it's probably going to be like WrestleMania 25, where all the air gets sucked out of the room. You know, like the crowd is exhausted from the Hell in a Cell match to go try out the Wharton and Triple H. Yeah, and they'll put like a Divas tag match or something in between it. Bath and break. Yeah, pretty much. Like, all right, let's calm the let the let the crowd calm down a little bit, and then we'll have the main event: Triple H and Roman Reigns. I mean, I can't see another Divas match on the show besides the Triple Threat. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if they do the Triple Threat, which I assume they are. I think there's rumors of having Brie uh, teaming up with someone to go up against Lana and someone. Okay, but that might be like a pre-show deal. I could see that as a cool down match then. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, you know, if you if you put a triple threat Divas match on that card, that's going to be one that people are going to be talking about. Um, you got to have a cool down match somewhere. Um, I don't know. I'm, I know that they're wanting to sell like 100,000 tickets, and I think they've sold. They can't. No, they can't. They work the numbers every year anyway, but they don't have the roster to sell 100,000. Well, they don't have the roster, and they're cutting off a good portion of the stadium. And currently, I think they're up to seventy thousand tickets or something like that. Last last time I saw, close to seventy thousand. Which is probably bullshit number. Yeah, it's probably people who have purchased the tickets, what's, but what's, not who are going. Is it me? Is it every year they're like, "Oh, it's a new record"? Do they say that every year because they bullshit. They they fudge the numbers every year, the, and every they year. find and they find a way to word it like you said a, a record. It was like a new indoor record for a sporting event, something like that. Yeah, you know? like for the Superdome, they said it was some sort of record, but a different like a band. I think like U two or something 
had the, had the record or something. I don't know. You know, another thing is if they open up the the stadium, I'm, that is another reason I would like not be heartbroken for not be there because I don't want to sit in the fucking sun. It'll be setting by by that time. Uh, well, see, I hated how many last year were, like it was so. Oh hard. yeah, that bugs the shit out of me. That would have. I, I would never want to go to Mania in an open stadium. Mm-hmm. Closed stadium or nothing. I got sunburnt. And, it's well, not about this. It's about the view of what's going on. Yeah, and the sun is in your eyes. And uh, but the good thing about that is, you know, I'm sure to start Mania, they'll have the roof open because mm-hmm. they'll probably have a jet or something fly over, and they can close the roof within about 20 minutes. I mean, that's fine. I'm just like I would not want to. But there, try are, and see the show like but the way they have that stadium designed, there is a patch, there is a stretch where the sun will shine through on a sunset. And it will blind a good portion of the... That would piss me off. Yeah. It's like, I paid X amount of money for tickets. I can't even see what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. How far of a drive to Dallas is it from here? Six Six hours? hours. Uh, Give or take. Probably five and a half if you don't stop. I wish it was like two hours, like here to Houston, you know? So we can just go for... It's a 90-minute flight, but... That's expensive. Yeah, it, it is expensive, especially if you were to book it this close to the event. But um, yeah. I mean, if y'all, <laughs> if we decided, yeah, we're gonna go do it. We could go up there. Heck, we can go up Friday night and uh, stay at my sister's house, spend all day Saturday there, and then drive back Sunday morning. I don't know. What I else? Just, I to, no, that's, See, I'm tempting you guys, yeah, but you I know, are, I know, Doug are. and myself would have to request off for work, and I know ain't happening for me, bro. Yeah, ain't happening. So um. Maybe you'll get sick. Um, <laughs> just go in Friday. But man, I'm not. If I get sick, I may not have a job to come back to. They may just burn the fucker down. <laughs> they may be like, fuck it. We're done. Mm-hmm. You can't get no sick. No mail today. Sorry. There's like a lot of people out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to how it's going to be. We'll have to, we'll have to see as time moves on. But, uh, I don't know. What were y'all's thoughts on the McMahon and Undertaker segment, especially Dude. with like McMahon saying, oh, Shane is no longer my son. He's now well, he's, just Yeah, a, he'll no longer be my son after he loses and he's, blah, blah, blah. He's blah, just blah. a son of a bitch. <laughs> that cracked me up. Yeah, call your wife a bitch. Poor Linda. She put up with so much. <laughs> is he still with her? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're still married. I thought they got a divorce. Or nah. Angle. I think that was an angle. Oh. That was a work. I believed it. I don't know. Doug, what are your thoughts? What? On uh, Vince and, and the Taker segment. The Taker. The Taker. I don't know. I felt like it was pretty cut and dry. It was just like, Taker was like, yes, I'm going to do this because this is what I do, but mm-hmm. it's, it's on you. Yeah. It's on you. And after I kill your son, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill him, and it's going to be your fault. You hired me to do this. So um, um, after that, then you got to go. I don't know when it was, but you have to talk about the important segment with Natalia. No, I don't. In the subway, I didn't put it on subway, here for a reason. In the subway. No. The promote in the subway. Well, you've done it, so there you go. What? Um, no, no, no you, you talked about it. So no, no, you're talking about more. So the next they matchup, we got to see it. Bubba Ray Dudley next going thing, up against. They're going to bring back the farting gimmick. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Too many meatball marinara subs. <laughs> Poor woman. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Why the fuck is she doing Subway commercials? Because <laughs> they have nothing else for her. So next up, we got to see Bubba Ray Dudley go up against Jay Uso. So this one tore the house down. Why are the fuck are the Dudleys and Usos wrestling singles? Woo! Because probably on SmackDown, we're going to see Devon versus Jimmy. That is not a valid answer. <laughs> and then... Question. Next week, we're going to see a three-on-three match where it's going to be the Usos and Ziggler against the Dudleys and, wait, yeah, The Miz. That's not how you book that. I was about to say, you know, that that formula sounds familiar. What what formula is that? <laughs> that's WWE's WWE, formula. WWE 2K16 formula. I don't care what kind of game that's it is. A, that's, that's the formula. You can do that with um, singles wrestlers who were put together and then as gonna a be, tag team. Then it's going to be the break. Usos, Ziggler, and Big Show against the Dudleys and Miz and Owens. Well, that's fine. That's different. I'm saying why the fuck are the... <laughs> now, there is a big difference between making teams of like larger groups of guys and breaking up exclusive tag team wrestlers to mm-hmm. wrestle singles matches for no reason. That just means you just put them against one of those other tag teams that you don't ever put on TV 
you, you just they wrestle all those guys this week. Like it's the Ascension. Also, yeah. Or whoever. Like yeah, might Ascension. as well. Yeah, Ascension's the perfect job team. They can beat the Ascension. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to see this match. I don't think many people did. I don't even care for the feud. And is it just me, or can the Usos go ahead and drop the when we say, you say part? Oh, that doesn't bother me. It's just starting to get on my on my nerves. It's like, okay, yeah, we understand by this point in time. No, You've I done mean, it for just, like two and a half years. No, it's that's, just their gimmick. It's just that's something hip-hop. To do. That's like call and response. It's like when I say, hey, you say, it's like that. It's like true that. It's like a it's a hip hop thing. It's like a I remember it's like I the hype say, man the hype man is like telling the yeah, crowd what to I do. Mean, yeah, I mean I get that, but part of me I wanna say that I saw it on a Raw or a SmackDown where instead of saying that they just go, Ooh and the crowd said, Oh, it's like all right. Well they do that in the match, but their yeah. entrance they do the No, I'm saying like during their entrance yeah. they did it once. But whatever. Maybe so. I don't know. Maybe I'm it alone doesn't bother on that me one. though. I like hip hop though. I'm by myself. Obama. Yeah, you are. <coughs> in the cold. <laughs> yep, in the cold, walking by myself. Trying to hitchhike back to town, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, next match, hope we got to see. Oh, it wasn't even a match, it was a backstage segment. R Truth and Gold Dust. The uh, will they, won't they thing, I guess, that they've got going on. The best one of these they've done so far. Yeah. R Truth. I think just I walked out of the room for this. What happened? He was just like. I don't care what you got to say. If you brought something, don't show me. I don't care. I'm done. I don't want any part of it. Leave. I don't need your help winning, and I damn sure don't need your help losing. I don't appreciate that you shut off on my wife. <laughs> that too. <laughs> so uh, Then when uh, Goldust walked off, he was like, he sort of looked like he felt bad. Because Goldust walked away. Yeah, he's going to bring a cake. Sorry for yelling at you. Sorry for being annoying. I just want you to be my partner. Mm-hmm. So after that, we got to see Big Show going up against Kevin Owens in a match that ends in a count out with Big Show being the victor. Thoughts? Victor. Uh, yeah, hand. I don't have a lot of interest in this. I don't, <laughs> I don't drop, know, man. Drop show. It's going to accumulate, accumulate, whatever it is, whatever that word is. Culminate? Yeah, that. At Roadblock. And that'll be the end of it, so that they can focus on Styles or Zoans. Roadblock. Fingers crossed for that. I mean, that was just an example of how they could give either one of these guys something better to do. You know? It's not yeah. that fucking hard. It took us all two seconds to say, oh, why don't they just wrestle each other? Yeah. Um. So, yeah, Big Show gets the win. After that, we got to see Naomi go up against Brie Bella, who earlier in the match, or earlier in the night, had a confrontation with uh, Lana, basically saying... You know, you're you're bad and I'm good and your husband isn't great and mine's amazing and gets me everything I want. And then Bree's like, you need to shave your husband's back. So that'll teach you. I don't remember this. What? Who needs me the back either. shave? Rusev. Okay. I mis- misunderstood you. I thought the, um, you're talking about Naomi. Still Naomi alive. needs to shave her back? <laughs> I thought you were saying <laughs> Naomi needs to shave her man's back. Oh no! Okay, I got, I got you. No, because I understand. Because earlier in the night, I must have missed this. Brie so was interrupted. And I missed it. Too. They had like a stare down or whatever, and I, got you. I saw one person comment. Was like, "Who's Brie to comment about other husbands? You know, hair preferences." <laughs> hey man, Brian's hair looks good. It good. does. He he is a strapping young man. The beard looks nice. I'll he is both. handsome. Look, I I got no problem saying that his shit got out of control for a while. Yeah, like, <laughs> his hair and his there beard. towards the end it was getting uh pretty bad. His hair and his beard got out of fucking control. But when he 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 cut the hair and he trimmed the beard, it looks nice. Yeah, got no problem with it. And you know the hair obviously went. He yeah, did it for a good reason. Sure. So I wish he would have explained nice. that long ago instead of oh yeah, Bree Bree likes it like well, this. Well, I thought what he was doing is he was. Not he was gonna have like a hair versus something match where mm. eventually he was gonna he was gonna lose something and he was gonna have to shave the beard and that would be the reason you know what I mean like yeah. a hair versus mask type thing. Mm-hmm. So, I thought that's what he was building up. For. Gotcha. It's like the old old school way of doing things is like if a guy with long hair was gonna get a haircut, like he would just they would just be like hey just save it we'll do it as a stipulation and right. then they will pay him a little more to like cut his hair or whatever you know shave it. Mm. <laughs> I thought that's what he was working at Angle. 
Gotcha. Or was going to lead into working it anyway. Yeah. But um, then going back to the matchup, Naomi does end up defeating Brie Bella, and Lana comes out and... <laughs> Congratulations, Brie. Um, nothing really to take away from the matchup. That takes us into the main event of the evening, Dean Ambrose versus Alberto Del Rio with the League of Nations at ringside. Nothing could possibly go wrong, right? They're going to stick to the side and be all by themselves and during the match Triple H comes out and points and that's when the League of Nations attack getting themselves disqualified so Dean Ambrose gets the win and then they leave what's this new thing they got going on oh uh, they're I mean Del Rio's been doing that for a while now they all do it now that yeah they're all like oh I'm gonna do that too because that's really cool <laughs> it's, they made they did it a lot yeah. like an overwhelming yeah. amount they're like yeah. you need to do that less <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's try it out. Let's I mean, I get, I get, I guess technically they're heels, so anything they do that you don't like sort of works in their favor. That's but their, that's their unification. Like the world, like we are all, we the, are, all the nations. We are the world. We are the children. <laughs> we are the world. We are, we are the, the children. children. You know the next words because I know. I don't. We are the ones that make a better place. So let's start giving. I don't fucking know. The happy okay. face. Anywho, yeah, around the world. Just seeing Daft Punk around the world. Around the world, around the world. Huh? Yeah, I like that lyric. I like whenever he says around the world. Um, <laughs> so Triple H comes out and gives Dean the pedigree and says, oh, yeah, you're on. You got your match. And Dean's like, hey, thanks. And then Triple H comes out and kicks the crap out of him some more. That'll teach him. A lot of Triple H kicking babyface ass. Yep. They didn't announce at the end of the Raw. Like it, it was like after all they announced uh, the roadblock thing, huh? Yeah. They said that's where it's going to take place. Hey, so what day of the week is that? It's a Saturday, Saturday. night. Saturday. 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 So I was telling Tyler like it's more a, like a glorified house show. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And like it's going to be in Toronto. Gotcha. On the WWE Network. I mean, hey, they got a fucking network. There's no reason to not do stuff like this. That's right. And I will have internet on my, on the cruise ship, which is really nice. Will so not. Maybe, maybe if I have nothing to do that night. Well, who am I kidding? I would have lots of stuff to do that night. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, that was so bad. You were so, <laughs> you were so happy to say that dumb joke. You were like, I, was I think- saw it in your eyes. You're like, you're like. Wait for it, guys. I was, I was thinking that. I was like, no, he's going to say something. Was, he was so proud of himself. He was like, wait for it. <laughs> hey Who am I kidding? <laughs> so, um. Ain't nobody got time for that. God. <laughs> you guys are so proud of your jokes. <laughs> yep. I like terrible jokes. Not like terrible as in offensive. I mean, like, God, that was an awful joke. Like. I know, brother. Not, <laughs> I like the not funny jokes. <laughs> well, yeah, he knows. Yeah, he does. He does. So, all right. I knew you were going to set up for that. Anyways, what did you guys think of the brawl? Uh, I found. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, I just I asked you all a nothing. question. I know. Uh, but I find it interesting that last week Triple H goes out and beats someone up and gets cheered. This week he goes out, beats someone up, and gets booed. So, oh, well, you know, the should that tell the WWE something about who the audience wants to support? Well, that's why Roman's off TV the next couple weeks because they're they're running into some the type of cities are going to boom. They posted, that was strategic. They posted a picture of like Roman's nose being all swollen and stuff like that. Did y'all see the picture? Yeah, it's I a work it. injury there. Right? Oh yes, it is. Yeah, but earlier. I think he just shoved some shit in his nose. Yeah, but during the weekend, they actually posted a a picture from a house show with Roman Reigns there, hands over his head, nose completely fine. Oh, that's unforgivably dumb. Yes. Yes, it is. So. No one's going to know. Yeah. I mean, like. People that were there. I mean, like, like one, like when they did one scene, that was different because they made like a little, (laughs) they made a little game out of it. Yeah. They should have put him in like a face mask or something like Cody used to wear. Yeah. What does he look like? I wonder. So anyway, so that wraps up Raw. Yay. 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 Uh, Let's talk some Lucha Underground. Um, I'm behind. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Well, should we not spoil it then? No, I'll catch up. Go ahead. Okay. What have you thought about it so far? Um, I mean, the last episode that I saw was 
we find out Joey Ryan and uh, Mr. S- is it Cisco? What is the guy's name? Or undercover cop. So I'm, Cortez. I think, I think I'm two episodes behind. Oh, okay. But go, but go ahead. I'll catch up. Okay. We won't talk about any storyline purposes go ahead. stuff it's, that's going it's on. Fun. Go ahead. Well, I'm not because I can. I don't remember. Oh, okay. Um, the only thing I do remember is uh, Pentagon and Katrina having like a face to face, and you know how like Katrina can like teleport or whatever it is, mm-hmm. like she'll disappear and reappear somewhere. Like Pentagon was in the mat, uh, was in the ring. It was an empty arena, you know. Obviously shot like before the tapings and stuff. Um, she walks across and he's like, "Hey, you know, I want I want to fight your guy." And you know, the lights go out, lights come back on, and she's like right up in his face in the ring and they have words and then uh they fight yeah they're, they're getting ready to fight and he puts her in the arm breaker hold like he's about to do it and then the lights flicker and come back on and she's outside the ring or uh, on the outside of the ring while he's still in the position like oh holy shit you know well cool. he wants prince puma puma yes puma puma, puma. Uh, next week and she's like why should you and that's when they did all that stuff and later on after he put her in the arm bar and then She's like, yeah, you can have have him, but remember, you just made a big mistake of putting your hands on me. So, mm-hmm. and then she walked away. Yeah. So, um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, uh, but the uh, first matchup we got to see Jack Evans going up against uh, uh, B.J. Black. That's a. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, you did yeah. say it. Yeah. Yeah. Above. No. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, awesome. Uh, no, it was a fun match. This motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> On the week of my wedding, he's doing this shit. Yeah. Uh, I guarantee you won't be able to do it next week. Uh, that's for sure. I'll do it the, the week after. Um, <laughs> no, that was. It was. I think their first uh, match of them fighting each other and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, another another match of uh, BJ losing. Who? <laughs> PJ Black. PJ Black. Yes. He lost. He did. That's his second match, right? Yeah. Oh, and I don't two. know what's going on, but um, they're establishing other other talent. He's brought in as enhancement, I guess. I don't know, but no, it, it was it was a fun match between them and uh, uh, Drago. Drago. He came out. That was a cool mask he had. I know he had two masks on. His yeah. regular mask plus another mask on top of that. What was that? That thing was huge. I don't know. Uh, it was pretty nuts. I, obviously, I didn't see the episode because I'm behind, but it may have been his. Uh, at horns, yeah. It may have been like his entrance mask that he wore at Triple Mania last year. It's it's like um, Look it's like a big extravagant like entrance thing for like a big show. Like you know, some sometimes Mania will have like a big entrance. Mm-hmm. It's like his his like big deal mask. It looks like a whatever. skull with like uh, horns. It sounds like his the match the like over mask that he wore to Triple Mania last year. But um, he came down and was trying to distract um, Jack Evans, and he had the mist. Uh, is that what he calls it? Yeah. And he like Jack Evans got out of the way and, and threw PJ Black into it, and he rolled up. He rolled him up right, and uh, and I then he so. got the one, two, three. And then, you know he was celebrating. Is that it? Th- I think so. Kind of close to wrong. it. Yeah, that's similar to what I. Not exactly it, but. But no, it was um. It was a fun match. Yeah, for sure. Not too bad. Uh. Next matchup, we got to see King Cuerno going up against Killshot. What did you think about that one? Um, trying to remember, remember uh, what was going on. Uh, this was another. Uh, he had to defend. Match. Did he have to defend the uh, Gift of the Gods title? I don't think he did. I want to say he he no he did not. But uh, I know after later on after the match. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, like triple Mania, like eccentric. Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know after the matchup, King Cuerno was uh, talking to, uh, oh, who was it? Katrina? Yeah. Saying, I'm just I'm, forget about, Fe- oh, no, because actually going back in the match, Phoenix came in yeah. at the end, and that's when later on he's like, forget about Phoenix, he yeah. can't die or whatever, threw the belt on Katrina's desk, and it's like, I want to challenge Mill, and she's like, uh, no, <laughs> and um but you have to fight Phoenix next week or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, I demand a championship title uh, uh, shot. Uh, and she's like, no, he took the title belt, so he has to fight Phoenix. Yeah. Was there another stipulation? Uh, I don't know. If he loses or something? I don't know. I don't remember. Um, but after that, next matchup we got to see 
Chavo, Cortez, and Mr. Cisco in a three-on-one gauntlet match against Tejano. Yeah. And uh, the first two guys, Cortez the and guy Cisco. The first guy got like, super kicked off the bat, and yeah. he got pinned. Yeah. Um, I think that was Cortez. I don't remember. But then uh, the Mr. Cisco went on for a while, and then he got pinned, and um, then Chavo came in, ended up getting the victory. Yeah. Um. They had another um, uh, thing with Dario Cueto. He was wherever they wherever they're at um, that fighting place. Mm-hmm. Him and what's the girl's name? Black Lotus. Black Lotus. And he tells a story of when he was young. Br- yeah, and how his the he killers. thought his mom was gonna kill him. His brother saved him. His mom was gonna kill Dario. Yeah, because she mom? was a violent lady or a very abusive. Okay. And. His, his brother like hit her in the back of the head with this bull trophy. Oh yeah, bull. that's oh, the one that's, that's why I love the bull yeah. trophy so much. Yeah, and um, just kept, kept on hitting her and hitting her until she was dead. And Black Lotus like, I'm sorry. And he goes, Why? That was the best day of my life because I I learned to like violence that day. So that was it. He, he looked like history. A Did they show Montanza again or no? No, it was just them outside of that place, and you can hear people like screaming. Behind the door, the, like ten building where they're murdering mm-hmm. fools. Yeah, mm-hmm. heard this or this underground place. Well, she said that um, I forgot what she said, but he he said, "Well, you started the war." Yeah. So uh, and that takes us to the uh, the final matchup. I wonder how they're gonna get back to the the temple and what's gonna happen because they're just the war is gonna be brought to the temple. We'll see. Lotus is gonna wrestle. They'll find a way. They've got. Plenty There's more episodes. There's a couple episodes, of like, yeah. plot threads that tie in. The cops are after them, and the cops are at Lucha Underground, mm-hmm. plus the Lotus stuff. And... Should be interesting. We want Dario back. Final matchup we got to see Johnny Mundo going up against not a man, but a machine cage. Yeah. And, that uh, dude's. God. It's ridiculous how jacked he is. Yeah, it is. That's true. But um, overall, solid matchup. Uh, the match, who was the chick? I don't remember. Oh, they said her name. But anyways, she... I uh, can't remember her name. Did, did Was she present before the match ended? No, it was, it was uh, right after the match. Because okay. she came in with that weapon, yeah, that's and right. Johnny used it. Yeah, that's I can't right. remember her name, but they're like... Uh, it was not Molina. Huh? It was not Molina. No. Uh, I've never seen her before, but yeah. uh, Mass Striker was hyping it. Like, you don't know who's going to show up in Lucha Underground. So yeah. whoever she is is probably someone big from another organization or something. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know Oh, did they, they finally bring, like, uh, Cheerleader Melissa in? Is that who it was? They had a different name. She was the girl who played, uh, you remember Kong's, uh, Raisha Saeed, like Kong's manager? Like, that's Cheerleader Melissa. And I think they were talking about they, they signed her for Lucha Underground. I didn't see the show, so I don't know who you're I talking will, about. We'll find a picture after this, and I'll show you who okay. it is, and you can tell me who that is. Okay. Yeah. So, um, all in all, you know. Am I forgetting uh, another thing? There might have been, but like I said, I, I don't remember too much about it because I watched it the day. It, you know, like I went home from work, watched it, and then didn't, didn't rewatch it, so it was more fresh on your brain, on your brain than mine. They show a video package with... Um, Pentagon Jr. and uh, I want to say that's her, but she had blonde hair. Yeah, the, the chick did have blonde hair. So that might have been her. No telling. But uh, once once you see her, I'm sure you'll recognize her. But uh, all in all, another good episode of Lucha Underground. Yeah. See, I missed last week's episode, mm-hmm. but I caught this week's. So. Very enjoyable stuff. And for those yeah. of you who want to go back and relive Lucha Underground, you can by uh, going to iTunes. Uh, season 1 is available on iTunes for digital download for the uh, low price of forty four ninety nine, And that's, I believe, 39 episodes of uh, Season 1. That's not too bad. That's a lot. Yeah. Did you notice that in this episode it seemed like, because usually the format is like three ep- uh, three wrestling matches. Yeah. This is like four. This was four. They, they kind of cut away from... A bunch of stories they kind of okay we're gonna go to a commercial when we they come back two things but oh well, yeah but like when we come back from commercial we're gonna have another matchup and it came back with the wrestlers already in the ring and so they're like all right let's fight you know 
Um, so they kind of they cut out the entrances and stuff so that they could have four matches. Uh, so, uh, do you know if there's certain people that are still there? Is uh, Davari still with Lucha? I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know. There's certain people I have yeah. not seen. But yeah, Lucha Underground season one on iTunes for forty for forty four ninety nine. Season two is available for download uh, at thirty nine ninety nine. And what that'll do is. You know, it's it's sort of like a season pass for a video game. Like you purchase it now, and then when more content comes out, it'll just automatically download onto your uh, onto your computer. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, another bit of hot topic news: Jim Ross has announced that Bret Hart has beaten cancer. That is good. Yeah. So uh, congratulations to uh, to Bret Hart. That is absolutely huge. I'm glad they were able to to treat it in time mm-hmm. before it spread too much. Yeah. And uh, it's on the on the Road to recovery, as they say. Uh, as we mentioned earlier in the show, WWE is going to televise the event Roadblock on Saturday, March 12th on the WWE Network. Main main event, Triple H versus Dean Ambrose for the WWE Championship. Should be uh, interesting. Moving on into TNA news. TNA's lawsuit against Scott Steiner has been dismissed. What was the lawsuit? He apparently breached his contract and was talking bad about the company and they're saying you can't do that you can't say that kind of stuff and well, I, can do whatever I, want. God, I know a lot of uh tweets were deleted and a bunch of badasses. stuff like that so uh but the uh the case has been dismissed um and kurt angle news he has uh, reportedly come out and said he would l- love to reboot in a sense team angle and uh, i think the uh world knew exactly who he had in mind as far as that, that being uh, American Alpha. Yep. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how I feel with Kurt Angle coming back. And they won't, especially after this Brian stuff. They can't touch. The, they can't. I mean, they can't touch him in like an active role. Well, no, not not active competing, but yeah. maybe having come back and be a manager of some sort. Yeah, okay, that's a, although. Wait, so, Jordan and Gable can pretty much carry themselves on the mic. So that would just so be, they're in talks with them, or, or they're or just a it's just a, something just, that he would like to do. Oh, it was like if I were like, to come back to WWE, here's what I'd like to do. Just putting it out there, like putting that out to the universe, hoping to. Hey, if someone who, whose initials are VKM happen to be listening, you know, here, I, I would here's love to come back do. and do something. Yeah, here's 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 something I'd like to do. I would agree to this. I'll yeah. say, Kurt shouldn't wrestle anymore. No, definitely he, not. In light of all this Brian stuff, there's no way they could take him back. Yeah. There's no way he could pass the standards of test and they put Brian there. Bring him back as a manager and uh, help help the guys over at NXT hone their craft. True. I think that would be um, a phenomenal asset to the uh, performance center. That's AJ's thing. Phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, other my jokes are bad. <laughs> other, no, it's just another reference that went over my head. You know, yeah, but you got that. One. Yeah. Um, other uh, other TNA news: Davy Richards is going to be out of action for several months due to reconstructive knee surgery. So hopefully, he uh, recovers and can come back a hundred percent. And I know you two guys are extremely devastated by this. Uh, the great Kali. Uh, suffered a serious head injury at a wrestling event. Actually, had to be a. Uh, um, what the heck happened? I I don't recall. I don't recall the story, but I just know that he ended up getting pretty banged up and uh, had to be stretchered out of the out of the building. Like they that's st- a big ass stretcher. They they had to stop the match and doctors tended to him and. Uh, but I mean, it looks like he's going to be okay. But, that's good. That's good. Be, that's good. That's so when, okay. I mean it. it couldn't possibly have been someone being unprofessional and taking liberties with him in the ring because he would just handle that. So it would have to be something, um, you know, unforeseen in the match. You know? Yeah. Crazy stuff happens. Don't worry. He will be back in action and WWE is going to get him. And nope. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. I don't need that. We um, want to know what Seth Rickson thinks. Just uh, leave a in. comment. With that being said, it's time to go into the Q and A portion of the show. I was going to ask if Seth is the one who tipped you off of the news. Yeah, the Seth. No, I saw it, I saw it on the uh, WNS page. Did he, did he? Did he talk to you about it? He did not. Oh, okay. No, I have no knowledge. Seth, of that. when you get a chance, talk to Daniel. We go to the Q and A portion of the show. Your questions, our answers. First question coming yeah, to us to Daniel because he loves it. From yeah, he loves Subs. It a, a lot. <laughs> Subs. You got stuff about Great Collie. 
No. He said, if you had the choice of bringing back either CM Punk or Daniel Bryan, who would you bring back? Uh, neither. Like, Punk is not happy being there and is detrimental to Bryan's health. Either. Well, what if you could bring them both back at 100% healthy? That's not the question. Oh, well, I'm just speculating. Yeah, you can't speculate. Well, I'm pretty uh, sure he's aware that Daniel Bryan has, has retired and CM Punk is now in the UFC. Hey, have you seen some of the comments of people on the internet about how Bryan owes people last match and that kind of crazy what? shit? I would not be surprised. Or put it past <laughs> I haven't seen that. I mean, Subs doesn't seem like that type of person, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, Bri- show, obviously so. Bryan's a very well knowledge gentleman. Obviously, well, how do you know it's not a gentle lady? Could be. Or um, what is the... A knowledgeable lady, human being in the lady, world of wrestling. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, so we'll be lady. Yeah. But uh, whatever, subs is... Subs. Uh, yeah, I mean, in, I mean, if uh, all things being equal, I mean, Brian's my guy. So. Yeah. Daniel Bryan all the way. Yeah. Same here. So uh, thanks for the question. Uh, next one's coming to us from Rosewood saying, hey, gr- hey, guys, great show as always. Daniel, the rant was awesome, and I agree with you. I have a question for you guys. I'm a Roman Reigns fan. But I agree with 80, 85% of the fans uh, that he has been booked like trash and his promos could use a lot of work. His in-ring work uh, isn't perfect by any means, but he has become a lot better uh, than he was a year ago. I feel that Roman sometimes gets treated unfairly by the WWE Universe, but I do understand why the fans treat Roman the way that they do. Because he is being shoved down our, uh, our throats and they already know that he is the next guy. Air quotes. Uh, my question to you guys is, do you think the WWE Universe would treat Roman the way that they do if they didn't already know he was the chosen one? Do you think he would be over, or do you think that he would still be getting booed? Thanks for answering my question, guys. Yeah, you are awesome. And Tyler, stop lying. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I Another mean, I think, nope. I think a certain segment of the fans are going to um, not – hitch their wagon to the chosen one no matter who the chosen one is. I think that's yeah. a fair statement to make, but I think uh, the majority of people aren't behind Roman for a lot of the reasons that you've listed. Um, he's not presented consistently. Uh, what the fans really loved him as like the like silent ass kicker in the shield, mm-hmm. but he is not really presented as the silent ass kicker anymore. Um, he's and in a lot of weird ways, they try to present him as an underdog, and he's not an underdog. It's really inconsistent. Like they they are trying to put it out like he's some um, fighting against the machine in Triple H, but he's not a he's not a scrappy underdog. He's a no. he's a cool ass kicker. So like you can't give him the underdog story and expect that to work. You have yeah. to give him the cool ass kicker story, and that's what'll work because that's what people liked about him when people liked him. Mm-hmm. And as far as his mic skills not being that great. I, it's not that he can't talk. It's that they won't let him find his voice. They try to, when you hear him in like interviews and stuff and he's just being himself, he can he, carry, he, he speaks fine yeah. and, and he can engage people on that level, but they're trying to make him speak in a specific way that they envision their top guys speaking. And that doesn't work for everyone. And it doesn't work for Roman. If they let him find his voice, and they stop like trying to shoehorn him like unevenly into stories that don't fit his character, then he'll be fine. Mm. Most of the people will turn around on him. Always going to be the part who won't, but those people are always going to be there. Mm. They just don't present him evenly in any way. And it was also a, a one part of wrong place, wrong time, because I know a lot of the fans for the Royal Rumble were expecting Daniel Bryan to win a particular year. Sure. And so they said, okay, they're going with who they originally want, that being Roman Reigns. Right. So the fans said, no, this is bullcrap. We wanted Daniel Bryan to win, and you guys have taken that from us. So screw screw whoever you want to be your guy. I mean, heck, go back to the year that they were expecting Daniel Bryan to be in the Royal Rumble, and he wasn't even in it, leading up to WrestleMania 30. They booed the hell out of Rey Mysterio. Had nothing to do with yeah. the fact that it was Rey Mysterio. It was the fact that it was not Daniel Bryan. But... Who did they rally behind in that same rumble? Roman Reigns. And that's when he was presented in a way that suited him. That's right. So it's all about presentation. It's all about proper timing and 
getting stuff in order. And he's not an underdog. Stop trying yeah. to tell an underdog story. Yeah, what he did after what was it TLC when he just beat the holy hell out of Triple H and put him through a table and just like went off on everybody. Like, do you remember that? Yeah. That was the best booking idea that they've had for Roman Reigns since he's been a singles competitor. Like, you're not like scrappy underdog one week and then the next week you're sexy. I'm gonna mac on a Renee and and, and be cool <laughs> like that. That's incongruent. That doesn't yeah. work. It's two different fucking things. It's two different characters. Find a character that works. It's not the underdog character, and stop giving him such shit. Stop writing such shit promos for him. He can speak fine. Yeah, but he. He's probably not a guy who can remember this fucking eight paragraph promo that you wrote for him. Mm. If you just give him some points, let him speak like himself. You you interviewed the man; he speaks yeah. fine. Yeah, he can communicate. He will win people over. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, it's just poor presentation. He's not a fa- he's not a particularly uh, particularly over with the comic book fans. I know that's for sure. Yeah, but that's <laughs> that sort of plays into his like douchey like sure. I'm a I'm a hard ass cool guy. You I'm know cool. what I mean? Yeah, I'm, cool. I'm too cool for comedy. That's right cons- that's more consistent with his character than Triple H beating his ass. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, a lot of people are saying, "Hey, man, just have the guy go back to being a hardcore badass." And the best time that he was that strong, silent badass type was when he was in the Shield. And for the majority of the Shield's time in the WWE, they were heels. So, do you think that turning him heel to maybe tone it, tone his mics, mic skills down, so that he can come in and just be like, "Listen, you're in my ring. I want you out. If you don't leave, I'm forcing you out." I mean, he should have he should have gotten a heel run, like do you, by design because I mean we talked about yeah. this in the past how all the guys were heels mm-hmm. and then they were so good at being a heel the cr- the crowd turned them themselves right. So that he, if he was a good enough heel, the crowd would eventually turn him baby on their. Yeah, but it's, he's gonna have to talk a little bit regardless. He right. can't be completely. He can't be as silent as he was in the Shield. But the key thing is he needs to speak like himself. Right. And he does. See when he it seems, when you have him going out there saying suffer and succotash. And, you know why do people love uh, Daniel Bryan so fucking much? Because he seems so authentic. It's just genuine. Yeah. Yeah. You don't feel like Roman Reigns is authentic or genuine. Mm-hmm. When he speaks. It just doesn't come it's off. the same reason why everyone loves CM Punk. He go out, he's go out there, and you're like, this guy's not reading a script. He's not forgetting his lines. He's just pissed off, and he's telling people about yeah, it. Yeah, that's just who that guy is. Yeah, same with Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, he he could cut a go out there and cut a promo today, and the fans would eat it up. It's because he's like, I'm not going to BS around it. I'm just going to come out here, say what I've got to say, and we're going to move on. So he would be fine if they would just stop being so weird about everything. Yeah, I feel like maybe a heel turn in the near future. Well, that was could supposedly help. the plan. Like, yeah. Before Seth got hurt, he was going to turn, and Seth was mm-hmm. going to get the, the the Triple H match at Mania. They yeah. were obviously building to that. Because right, of right. Things he, happen, yeah. and nothing you can do about that. But uh, Rosewood, thank you so much for the question. We do appreciate it, and you know we can do all we can to stop Tyler from lying, but nothing's going to stop him. I do not lie. I don't really care. That's their thing. Yeah, and uh, final question and. Lie. This is a uh, this is a review slash feedback slash question, so uh, so it's Break gonna it be down. it's gonna be a long one. So if I mess up a number of times, forgive me. Uh, it's coming from Micah, saying <gasps> I commented late th- uh, Tuesday evening uh, last week. It seems I didn't make the cut, and I'll go ahead and stop right there. Yes, um, we do have sort of a cutoff time um, once we get started the show started on the show. We don't really go back and check comments for the previous week, so apologies for that. Uh, saying, trust me, I had plenty of passionate words to say about Fastlane. Fastlane was a terrible pay-per-view, in my personal opinion. Kalisto versus Del Rio was good, but I'd rather see that on the show and put Edge and Christian segment on pre-show. More on that later. The Divas tag match was good, but forgettable. Naomi is a great worker, but doesn't get to show off often. Owens versus Ziggler was a regular match between them that we've seen a total of seven times since early December. Google helped. Um, the Wyatts were being presented as a dominant monster heel faction, and they should uh, that they should have lost clean to a tag team of two. Uh, wait, hang on. Uh, the Wyatts were were being presented as dominant heel faction, heel dominant monster heel faction that they should be and and lost to a tag team, uh, t- lost clean to a tag team of two older wrestlers who don't need uh, the rub and Ryback who carried them. 
carried the whole match for his team. And while I see glimpses of something for Ryback, his team could have taken that loss, which would have made the Wyatts look stronger. Then instead, on Raw, he just goes to a singles match and delivers that promo uh, he did, making him seem uh, a bit more serious rather than a jerk who doesn't care for a loss on his record and walking away from a match and his team. Brie versus Charlotte has me interested because there was a 10% chance that Brie might win the belt. But the match was full of mistakes and awkward, just like we all knew it would be with Brie involved. Styles and Jericho was a gem in my mind. It was a solid match, a solid good match. Personally, not as good as their SmackDown match, but still A-grade quality with a few mishaps. Kicking out of the Styles Clash got me surprised, but following up with a submission puts him more over. As well as uh, many people in New Japan kicked out of it, and he'd have to hit it multiple times. Then the final hour, God, the Christian and Ed, or the Edge and Christian New Day League of Nations segment was abysmal. New Day and Edge and Christian were funny. They mentioned the League of Nations, and it was just booty from there. To follow up with a match from Superstars, I mean Curtis Axel versus R Truth was insulting. Then the main event. It was fun. It was good. My heart wanted Ambrose to win, but I was fine with Reigns winning. But the finish was so abrupt after Ambrose has whacked away with the chair. Roman spears him and pins him. Just uh, simple. Ambrose could have kicked out of it like Reigns kicked out of the Dirty Deeds as well uh, as well as it ended 15 minutes early. It seemed like Brock was like, let's wrap this up and not put me through the third table because I think that, that was the plan, but he seemed... Uh, to land hard on the second one and was done. Reigns winning was the logical choice, but they've been building uh, towards this match since Survivor Series. Plenty of mishaps have been made, but let's not forget uh, that great month Reigns had after TLC. So many cheers for this for the man. He was booked so correctly. Quick promos, explosive offense, champion Aurora, uh, aura. Then Royal Rumble happened and went right back down the crapper. I want this whole Rise of the Roman Empire thing to be over Uh after Triple H's uh, obligatory rematch from this inevitably defeat, from his inevitably defeat at WrestleMania, and they proceed with uh, proceed with some new shakeups. I agree that WWE needs to listen to the fan base uh, that they tout so highly that they do, but Reigns uh, does have it now. Last year, not at all, but he uh, but he has improved tremendously, and I've caught myself rooting for him. Hopefully, in the road to WrestleMania, they can fix him and get him at least 70 to 75% cheers rather than 90% boos. Regarding some matches for WrestleMania, Shane has has uh, to have... He has to have someone fight for him. I really don't want to see a 46-year-old man who doesn't wrestle and is more well-known for putting his body in serious harm take on a 50-year-old man who does wrestle, has an overwhelming presence, and is known for his WrestleMania matches being outstanding. Maybe Shane has AJ Styles fight for him. Just say it out loud for a second. The Phenom versus the Phenomenal One writes itself. Ambrose versus Lesnar will be outstanding no matter who wins. Ambrose comes out looking great. Personally, I want Ambrose to win. It'll give him some sort of extra power up. Don't know how he'll do it, but that match I'm going to lose myself to. I really hope I get to go to WrestleMania. Personally, I'm from uh, get to go to WrestleMania personally. I'm from Dallas, Texas, but raised in Tampa my, my whole life. My father, who still lives in Texas, said he wanted to go and might be going. If I do, I will certainly make a priority to meet you guys and thank you for providing one of the best podcasts in the country. And of course, I've got some Q and A. Um, so before before we dive into that, um, thanks for the uh for the detailed recap. Uh, unfortunately, we will not be at Mania this time yeah. around, but uh, maybe if they go to Houston uh, or come back to Dallas in, in a future date, uh, we'll get to go. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as the Q&A, with Daniel getting married soon, this question centers around that. Uh, each one of you, if you could choose a living wrestler to be your best man uh, and deliver a speech at your west, uh, at your wedding, uh, who would you choose and why? I would go with Damian Sandow. He gives a very... Regal, he give, he'd give a very regalness to the festivities, and I think he'd give an emotional and superb speech about me. Trust me, it was hard for me to choose. P.S. Sorry about ranting along, uh, Daniel, <laughs> along with Daniel and this very long message. You asked for us to give your opinions, so I had to deliver. Can understand if you if you don't read all of this. Also, name of a segment when Daniel gets upset. Hashtag rustled Daniel's jammies. So, uh, jammies. Sorry. Not jammies. I'm wearing my PJs. Uh, PJ, not BJ. Not wearing my BJs tonight. Um, 
as far as who would I would have give a speech aside from Mr. One, don't call me Bear, Tyler A. Bear. Right. Um, I would probably not go with a wrestler. I would go with the manager. I'd want Paul Heyman to deliver a speech about me. That dude can sell anything to anybody and make you feel good that you spent money, you know, on the deal. Um, so I feel like he could really deliver quite the hype speech about me, which would be pretty cool. But if I had to choose a wrestler, mm, William Regal. I'm still thinking. Since you since you mentioned regalness. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, that's uh, tough and not something I put any thought to because I didn't read that question for some reason. Yeah. But uh, I will say this. if I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, no worries. If you have a chance to go back and rewatch it, watch the Hall of Fame speech that JBL gave for Ron Simmons. He can deliver very excellent speeches, uh, especially if it's something that he knows and cares about. Like the speech that he gave about Ron Simmons was phenomenal. It was amazing. Uh, so go back and watch that. But uh, personally, I'd choose Paul Heyman or William Regal. Yeah, I mean, this is a shitty answer, but I'll just go with Brian because he's my favorite and. Uh, when I did actually meet him, he was a very nice, like, mm-hmm. guy. And, I mean, clearly he knows how to talk to the crowd. I think he got one of the best send-offs ever, and that's because, yeah. you know, he himself, like, said what he wanted to say. I know that's a kind of a shitty, lame answer. But, no, I mean, a, if uh, that's who you want, that's that's your answer. I mean, I don't – it's hard to to not actually know any of them. Like, then that's what yeah. makes it hard to pick, you know. So. Poses a challenge. I would like Enzo Amore. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, because I like I I like his promos and I like how he talks. So yeah, very good stuff. So that's gonna do it for us this week. Out thank of a you. job, Noah. Yeah. So thank you everyone for the uh, for the questions. Make sure to submit your questions on our YouTube channel, WNS Video, also our Facebook page, WNS Podcast. Check us out on WrestlingNewsSource.com, WrestlingNewsSource.com on Facebook, and you can subscribe to our show on iTunes by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast. And uh, one more time, just to remind everyone, no show next week. No show next week. Don't expect one. And we'll this isn't back. gonna be like that one time where we said we weren't gonna have a show and then we prepared yeah. another show. We really don't have a show for you. Yeah, week. we're not. Also, we're not doing a live broadcast from Daniel's wedding. We're not doing that yeah. either. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so we'll periscope it. We'll periscope. Yeah. <laughs> Doubt it. We'll periscope the reception. Periscoping from Daniel's wedding. Oh my god! Do we have a periscope. We do have a periscope. All right, maybe we'll. Periscope. Yeah, give us that. Give <laughs> maybe us we'll that. periscope from the reception. Yeah. Right. That'll be your episode. Yeah. Cool. We'll do it. Maybe. Uh, maybe. 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 If you're lucky. There you go. We can periscope. Uh, we'll get you, and then maybe we'll uh, get Tex Lone Star drunk, and maybe we'll the he doesn't, periscope. He doesn't drink. Oh, he doesn't drink? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Well, he can pretend that he's drinking, and yeah. he can pretend that he's drunk. and then Give him some hard apple if cider. If not, we'll get Sushan drunk. And <laughs> yeah. Hey, fucker, you're, you're my DD, so uh, you're going to get me drunk and drive me home. I'm, okay, I'm going to get you drunk <laughs> and Sushan drunk, and then push Noah down. Uh, Please do. Yeah. Push, so, him, push him into the water. <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, you can follow us on Stitcher, Beyond Pod, and Player.fm. Just search Wrestling News Source Podcast to find us. Uh, the podcast is on Twitter at WNS Podcast. Daniel is at WNS underscore Daniel. Tyler's at Tyler underscore Aber. Uh The wedding is this Saturday. Give the address. No. Yeah. No offense to our listeners, but it's an invite only kind of deal. You know? Yeah. Well, everyone that's listening we only is we only have so many chairs, so many tables, they can and so s- much food. They can sit outside and look in. You know, that's what Periscope is. is. Get to buy some cigars. I'm gonna <laughs> smoke some fucking cigars. You are you, are you, you gonna get, bring a stogie? Are you gonna get some? I'll buy some. Okay. Yeah. Y'all want to smoke some? Yeah, I'll smoke some. I'll smoke it forever. I will not, but I appreciate it. You think that. that'll give us a problem with the ducks? Are they going to be like, this smells like smoke, you fucks? No. All right. I'm sure people. That would be hilarious <laughs> if they said that. I'm sure people smoke all the time. And all right. Fine. We're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down. We're in a public <laughs> place. You shouldn't be cursing. See, Sean will smoke one. I'll, yes. I'll go buy some cigars. See, Sean okay. will. You will. What about Tex? No. <laughs> Ryan? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go get some cigars. Okay. And uh, let me know when y'all do that. I'll join y'all, but I won't partake. Okay. Okay. Also, we'll get. Uh, this is for. Give me. Give me that uh, cigar gum. That they I feel like uh, it's a boy. It's a yeah. Girl. <laughs> yeah. Give me that. Give me that. The sticks. All right. I'll, I'll look for some. I don't know if I can find. I know I can find cigars. I don't know if I can find those, but I'll okay. look. I'll look. Don't don't go too far out of trouble for it. Right. But uh, yeah, I'll join you guys. I asked that. the guy at the tobacco shop. He's like. 
Same in a fucking candy store, man. <laughs> I don't know. I do not know where you get fake cigarettes. <laughs> Find something. Yeah. So there you go. Did you uh, do the Twitter Twitter thing? Yeah, I did. Yeah, you okay. Did. Well, there you go. So uh, that's gonna do it for us this week for the podcast crew. I am Daniel Heron. I'm Tyler Abear. I'm Doug. And we will catch you all in two weeks. Peace. Later, boy.